just make sure it's working. Oh, it's been so long. I believe I'm live. There shall be a bit of a delay here, but welcome to this live stream. Just make sure it's working. Oh, it's been so long. Ah, oh, okay. I believe everything's working. So it is time to get to work. So those of you who are just joining, hello, welcome. I'll probably let things get filled up in here a little bit. And we're going to take this uh, humble D7 Klingon battle cruiser. Hello, Rol hello, Rolex. So we're going to take this little humble D7 Klingon battle cruiser and upgrade it to a Katanga. Like I've got on these reference images right here. First appearing in Star Trek The Motion Picture, which was awesome when that first uh, that first Klingon soundtrack came on. It was like da 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 Anyway. So so I've got my old D7. I'll turn on the texturing for it. Is there a difference between the Katinka? Oh yes, many differences. The old D7. Uh, had less weapons, less... It didn't have a cloaking device. Apparently the Katinga is supposed to have a cloaking device. But this is my old artist artistic version of the older D7. And there's lots of differences, like the uh, bridge section right here, for example. Look at... This is like a classic D7 bridge for the Klingon ship. Kapla, Andrew. Hello, Addison. And... Um, so, yeah, the D7 uh, was way upgraded and first added uh, cloaking devices and all kinds of stuff. But, yeah, the bridge is very different. Like, the detail level we can see on the reference images of the bridge is very different than what I have over there. So, I'm going to have to uh, change all that. And I'm probably going to start there and work my way back. So, I'm kind of cheating a little bit. Um, should... Star Trek be retconned back to the Deep Space Nine era? Maybe. After the Dominion War, perhaps. Yes, I think. Alright, so I'm looking at this. And based on some reference images I have, we've got a lot of work to do. Where isn't my transparency working? Hang on. So we got a lot of work to do to, uh, oh, let's see, here we go, to make this look more like this. Um, so, yeah, I would say the uh, Klingons created the, the Katinga uh, to deal with the Constitution, and probably once the, the D7 was upgraded to the Katinga, it could safely kick the ass of a Constitution class, so then, of course... Federation has to upgrade the Constitution class again to the motion picture era stuff. All right. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to make a perfect replica because even the reference images I have vary quite a bit. So, I'm going to have to sort of artistically... Uh, take artistic liberties a bit. And it looks to me like when I first made this model... Huh, let's see. Oh, by the way, my friend Peepo and Rain are here. Y'all still here? Yep, yeah, still here. Okay. Rain and Peepo play games with me. Uh, and they're, they, they're mostly EVE Online players, but they play a variety of things. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is completely eliminate this dome right here that is the bridge so I can make it look more like a Katinga dome. And to do that, I'm going to have to select all these surfaces here. Looks like this was a separate object at one point, so I'm going to select all these things. Uh, there are some including forward torpedo launcher and Contiga being a photon torpedo launcher rather than just a universal port on the D7. Yeah, in a lot of gaming, like especially in the, the FASA games, um, it is said that 
the D7 did not really have a dedicated torpedo launcher down there. Um, now, that was my headcanon for a while, but it could be that different variants definitely had a torpedo launcher like. If you remember, um, oh, what was that episode with the Organians? I forgot what, what it was. But when the uh, Klingons attacked the Enterprise in, in orbit of Organia, they definitely hit it with something that looked very much like a photon torpedo. So it could be that at least some of the ships there probably had some torpedoes. All right. Goodbye to that. Uh, face select mode, it will select everything with the seams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm in face select mode. I'm just selecting by a, 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 what do you call it, islands, since I know what I'm looking at here. Okay. Faces. I guess I will start fresh with a brand new bridge. Make it easy on myself, and then I can combine it if I want to later. Yes, Aaron of Mercy, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, the V'ger probe just sort of deletes everything. And then, what was it? Uh, archived it for their records? <laughs> okay. We'll just start with the... You know, I wonder if I should make it with a box or a sphere. I usually start with the box because they're easier to control, and then I work it from there. But a sphere would give me that nice curve. I think I'm going to do a box. By the way, Rain and Peepo, you don't have to be nervous. Y'all can talk to me, too. <laughs> Oh, my gamer friends are nervous. I thought I was going to be nervous. All right. So what I think I'll probably do is just start with the dang dull cube. Because cubes and blender are based and cool. I almost always start with a cube when I'm starting over on something new. UFP to wormhole. Oh. Yeah, I thought about doing an EVE Online Star Trek crossover. Uh, so, so, Rain, what do you think would happen with an EVE Online Star Trek crossover? Any ideas? Well, from my understanding, Capsuleers would create trouble just for the sake of creating trouble while the four empires would try to genuinely spark the diplom diplomacy yeah yeah they would troll the uh, diplomats try to scam them so yeah there's that <laughs> so we can at least say the ferengi would get along with capsuleers very well oh yeah the ferengi and capsuleers would get along quite well uh green reference images match the fasa d7 minis yeah yeah, when we first see this ship on screen, it really looks blue, like, and it is in fact greenish. Um, but yeah, when we first see it on screen, it is in fact greenish. But we get the blue cloud from the V'ger, and um, the V'ger Pro, and that made it look blue. I always thought they might have been blue myself, but they're not blue. Wait. I'm going to do a mirror here. Mirror modifier. Mirror. X. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Good. It's there. It is there. Just hope like hell the Borg never assimilate a capsuleer. <laughs> I think, I think the, the capsuleers from Eve would give uh, the Borg a run for their money. If I'm, you know, being real about it, because, you know, the technology is pretty much very similar. I mean, they've got, I mean, the uh, there's also the drifters in EVE, which are kind of like Borg in a way. 
but they go and they collect dead bodies and then they cyborg them, but they don't speak. So they're like silent, mysterious cyborgs. So, My question to that is, would the capsular system detect a assimilated capsular as dead and have them wake up in a new clone, or would they just live through the whole thing? I don't know. But I would think that uh, Borg technology and uh, capsular technology is already really similar. All right, I'm looking at my model here, and it doesn't, the reference image just doesn't match up very well, and I knew that was going to be a problem, and the question is whether I was going to obsess about it or not. And because this, this deck I have is much taller than the deck on the Katinga. Um, so hello, hello everybody, welcome. Uh... Hello. So Don Runder says, hello. I hope everyone's weekend was well, despite the passings of Tony Bennett and Sinead O'Connor, which is true. Yeah. I was, uh, a friend of mine was listening to Zombie over and over again to uh, commemorate Sinead O'Connor. Pretty good song. Pretty good song. And I had a pretty good weekend, too. There was actually a Comic Con in my small little city, and I went there and was pleasantly surprised to see Lots of cosplay there and uh, stuff. And it was good. All right. Okay. So the question is... How much I should modify my model to, to fit the reference? Or should I just kind of wing it? I'm kind of going towards wing it because I could spend on the motion picture model. I, I spent days trying to get it 100% accurate. And uh, hopefully it was worth it. But on this one, since even reference models don't seem to. Uh, okay, now that's better now that I've scaled this. Scale this reference image up. This looks a little bit more accurate. All right, I'm just going to go with that. I think I mainly need to get the shapes accurate. Yeah, thank you, Super Game. I don't like to live stream that much because I'm kind of shy. I shouldn't be. Like, in uh, regular life, I interact with people just dandy. Um not used to interacting with my YouTube audience live just yet. <laughs> okay. So I'm kind of rough in this. Let's see. I should use hotkeys more like control R for loop cuts. GG. But you know, let's see. G Z move that up some. But yeah, Star Trek versus Eve Online. Maybe I should do that. Oh yeah, this isn't going to be accurate. That's okay. Let's get the side right first. Speaking of Star Trek models of any kind, Don Ron built and glued an AMT snap it model of Enterprise D, despite glue and paint being optional. You know, I haven't actually painted a model since I was a kid. Well, I spray painted this one that I 3D printed, but the spray paint doesn't really do well on here. Like, especially, uh, especially metallic spray paint. I think next time I try to 3D print something that needs to be metallic, I'm going to get the right material. Okay, now this, let's see, let's see. Of course, this looks very funny. Don't worry. Don't worry, y'all. Uh, this way, just like that. All right. Now, of course, all of this is in the wrong position, so I can fix that. Put 
that back to zero and that back to zero. Oh, so we got to figure this out. Star Trek versus Eve Online, right? So um, I think obviously that the way to start that out would be a wormhole, right? And then let's see, that's extruded. I need to fix that. So they go through Actually, a wormhole. Go ahead. Before you figure out how they get there, what scale is it going to be on? Are we talking all four empires? Are we talking Capsulea Corporation? Well, here's what I was thinking. That um, the Star Trek universe finds an entry into the New Eden uh, universe somehow through maybe abyssal space. And uh, go from there. And then kind of start with it. Like the Triglavians would be a very interesting encounter for Star Trek. It would be weird and strange, and it would be one of those what the fuck things. I might have to bleep that out later for. Actually, I think uh, I think I'm good as long as I don't cuss in the first uh, like uh, five minutes of the video. <laughs> Q could do it. Like when I first started really doing YouTube, um, I was like, okay, you know, Q, the Q, you know, was the one responsible for doing the Star Wars versus Star Trek thing a long time ago. But um, I've already done that, so I don't know if I want to do that again. See, this is kind of messy. But it seems more like, you know, the question is, does the Star Trek universe discover New Eden, or does New Eden discover the Star Trek universe? And they are about, what, 50,000 years apart? So, you know, EVE Online is 50,000 years in the, the future compared to um, Star Trek. And Trinda, you're right. It is proportionally different. Of course, this D7 is my D7, and I can't remember whether I used a um, true D7 schematic or if I based my D7, because if you look right here, it is definitely a bit different. But the reality is, I don't know that I have time to get it 100% accurate. Maybe over time I can work on it and then gradually make it more accurate but for now i'm just going to kind of loosely wing it i think the first video i'll do is uh i'll probably do something like the motion picture enterprise and just um just kind of uh go over all the main features but then eventually i'm considering either doing a um breakdown of what happened Let's see, I'm trying to figure out how to scale this right. Breakdown of what happened in the V'ger cloud and say why maybe the Enterprise was able to tank the uh, the V'ger attack, whereas the uh, Klingons could not. Of course, the, the uh, Enterprise didn't raise its shields until the last minute um, before that thing hit. So that could be one reason why you know, it could be that V'ger was firing just enough to uh, destroy the Klingon ships. All right, I'm getting pretty close here. In shape. And there's going to be quite a bit of a cliff down here I've got to make. So why not the Borg want to assimilate more and they go into another universe just as they did with... P yeah, it could be a Borg thing. The only thing is that EVE Online already has a lot of Borg-like elements. It's pretty much a cyberpunk in space. Uh, thousands of years in the future is pretty much what it is. So. Something is weird. All right. 
this. In that case, who would win? The Borg or the rogue drones? I think the Borg would kick the rogue drones' ass. I think a because I think a better fight would be either Borg versus Triglavians or Borg versus Drifters. Because the Triglavians have tech that we haven't even figured out yet. And um, drifters are just mysterious. So, you know, we don't quite understand their technology yet, right? Could snap this down to where they're supposed to go, but... There's some 3D modelers that watch my stuff and they're like, no, why don't you use certain hotkey or why don't you do that or why don't you uh, <laughs> do it that way? People be Snapchatting the hell out of me. Okay. All right, the shape of this looks pretty good, I think. It looks accurate. Accurate enough. I'll be increasing the poly count here in a little while. Let's see, this mesh flow is kind of weird. Let's bring that up some. All right, so now we need to cut because there's a uh, a lip. Like if we look, let me look at this reference images. So there's a big drop off before it makes contact with the rest of the hull. That was less painful than I thought it would be. I'll be increasing the polygons on here in a minute. But I need to get this drop off in there. I can do that. Yeah, the the Borg would adapt all kinds of weird technology from Eve Online, I'm sure. I think we're missing the ultimate showdown, however. What's that? The Federation versus Goonswarm Federation. <laughs> yeah. I hate to give one particular alliance too much uh, fun treatment in my uh, videos. But, you know... Let's see. Well, anyone versus a Capsuleer alliance would boil down to economic warfare. Does the alliance make enough money to keep throwing ships at you? True. All right, now. I'm actually going to apply this mirror for a, for a hot second. So I can work with it all the way around. Ooh. This looks a little funky. My uh, mesh flow is a little... Mesh flow is so important when you're modeling. It's like more important to be organized than fast. Okay. Slow is smooth. Smooth is quick. Yes, indeed. All right, so now I can just take all of this and extrude it in. And after I've done that, I'll glance at chats again. I think I'm actually starting to have fun. Okay, okay, I've got that extruded in just a bit. This whole thing seems a little... Let's see, let's see. Get that up to about right there. I'm going to put on a... Ooh, before I do that, I need to set up my uh, sharp edges. Alright, let's look at chat for a second. Uh, Don Don says Enterprise D is the first Star Trek starship I have seen in my life. You've seen a real starship? You've seen a real. I love the E as well. I think he means on screen. I don't think he actually saw it. 
I love the TOS Enterprise and the Motion Enterprise. Uh, Andrew Frost says, well, most EVE ships are way bigger than Star Trek ships. Uh, I'll come back to that. Uh, Trinda says, if you did EVE Trek crossover, if New Eden is ahead in time and technology-wise, wouldn't you have different anomalies in use rather than the usual wormhole or temporal rift? Maybe. There are wormholes in EVE, uh, and there are also... Um, filaments that actually light that can transport you to a, a type of uh, um, other space. One, one of them is called abyssal space. And uh, I don't think that... And, well, there's the filaments that take you to some, these tournament grounds where people do PvP as well, which I've never actually tried. Okay, I'm going to just set up some uh, sharp edges here. So that when I apply my, let's, see, let's do this. Okay, this is all. Make sure I stay organized. And I can just hang out there. Actually, no, let's do it this way. Okay. I think I'll just put a crease in all of this. Crease one. Oh, let's go ahead and shade smooth. Huh? Don't worry. This is not the final product. Let's actually come over here and do some auto smoothing. There we go. And we'll put a crease in there. If any of you guys are just joining, I'm trying to make a uh, Katinga class battle cruiser. And I am cheating a little bit by taking my old D7 hull and modifying the hell out of it. Increase one. I'm thinking about possibly doing a fight between an old Constitution class like a Battle Breakdown and a Katinka. And I have a theory that the, the cloak on the Katinga is so new, having just got them from the Romulans, that it doesn't have quite the capabilities of a, of a really good cloaking device where they can maneuver a lot and decloak, transfer energy to weapons very quickly and all that good stuff. It's probably something used mostly while they're traveling or laying in wait in ambush and uh, all that kind of good stuff but they may not even be able to use warp engines and cloak at the same time at this stage so that would make the fight a little bit more fair bluebird says in the future are there plans for chronos one or maybe the post tos and pre tng era ships like the ambassador class um I had I, I debated, you know, it wouldn't be that difficult if I get a good Katinga to make this a an actual Kronos 1 Katinga. Uh, it wouldn't be that hard. Um, maybe someday I could make a video of what would have happened if the Kronos 1 and the uh, Enterprise in Star Trek 6 actually did tangle. And if that happened, you know, that would have been really interesting. Chang seemed pretty confident that he could blow the Enterprise out of the stars, so he said anyway. All right. Peepo, you've been awfully quiet. Yeah, I just jumped out of the bath. <laughs> oh. Okay, really. You've been taking a shower? <laughs> pretty much. Peepo is an awesome Eve player, for those of you who play Eve. It's better than me. Well, I'm well rusty now, though. <laughs> yes. No, you're not. You've been doing... You've been hunting out there for a while. You're not that rusty. Oh, you should see me PvP, then. <laughs> I mean, you, you see me... me the backpack. 
You remember you watched me you watched me with the VEDMAC. What did you lose the VEDMAC? I didn't lose the VEDMAC, no. But I made the mistake of getting super close. Yeah, but you got out, so I think you're you're better than you think you are. Alright, I'm reasonably happy with this. And look at some reference images again. Seems like yeah, it seems like these are a little bit more taller and even even uh Battle would have Chang's cloak bird of prey. Yeah, that's true. It wouldn't be a fair fight at all. And maybe that's why he was so confident. Like he was gonna fight the Enterprise and then surprise it in a bit with that cloaked bird of prey, and then it would have been game game over. There was a uh, Star Trek novel way back in the day about um, the Klingons having their own tactical computer control system and uh, sort of like the uh, the M5 in the episode The Ultimate Computer. And uh, the difference was one person could control everything on the ship if they were skilled in, in combat. You know, they could just go from a console like a cloaked ship and uh, fight with it. And the Enterprise had to fight that thing. It was a pretty good novel. I think it was, I can't remember what it was called. All right. I'm rotating and talking, rotating and talking and not working. Okay, so what I need to do now. I have no idea what this piece is here that attaches to the bridge. Maybe it has something to do with the turbo lift or something like that. Uh, oh yeah, and then this. I think... Let's see. I need to make this a little boxier if needed, a little bit too smooth. I need to make it taller. About right there. That's looking reasonably good. I'll go with it. Okay, I wish I had a better view of what is going on back here behind this bridge. Actually, this is not too bad. It's too bad I don't have um, a physical model to work with so I can see, but I mustn't obsess too much. It's just pretty much a ramp that goes down from this bridge section. For some mysterious reason, that's all it is. No need to obsess about it too much. <laughs> Let's see. Realistically, all Chang would have to do to win is to have the cloaked bird jam enterprises jam enterprises surrender. Hmm. Oh. Oh yeah. That's right, when they were trying to, uh, to surrender. Okay. You know what, I think I'm going to go ahead and apply this, uh, subdivision surface. So I'll have more geometry to work with. And then I'll take it, let's see, it's H. Why is my transparency not working? Oh, I'll see. There we go. All right, so I think I can take it basically from this vertex and this vertex, and it would be pretty close. So what I think I'll do is actually just 
delete all this junk. And then um, I'll see where to work. And then maybe I can extrude it out. Maybe. It's going to be kind of tricky. All right. And it seems to go up pretty far, so I can get rid of that as well. Hmm. All right. Delete. Delete. I think it actually might be some kind of something to do with the turbo lift. I think that might actually be what it is. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it's a theory. All right, now how am I going to make this nice and neat? Sometimes I just go with instinct. All right, I think what I'm going to do... Just merge this junk together so I've got a nice let's see I can go nah, my chat window's in the way. Okay. Alright, I'll just go like that. And make this a nice opening of some kind. At last. Klingons do have turbo lifts. They do. Maybe not as much as the Federation. They prefer to walk around their ships quite a bit more, but they do have them. Okay, so let's put this out. Yeah, wait a minute. Getting all this organized. Sometimes I just have to stop thinking, and start playing with it, and then I figure it out. Alright, okay. Don't need to complicate this. Always be complicating things. This is my signature thing, to complicate things. Because um, it's just what I do. <laughs> Don't I complicate things, people? Would you say? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no comments. <laughs> I would say I definitely do. And then, but the, the problem is my vision is always a lot more grand than what reality can produce, you know? And that's true with almost everything I do. Unfortunately, sometimes it works out. It's like, it's an epic project that just seems to work out because for whatever reason it does. But most of the time, it's always... A dollar short and a dollar a day late, so someday I will be mellow and zen enough to where I won't I won't have to make like I'll be happy with the a progressive project that just takes its time and gets done and uh, all that good stuff. Yes, the problem for most artists in general is that they're, they always have these grand visions. 
Doesn't mean it's practical, though. In fact, there's nothing practical about art at all. And yet, it is valued like everyone values art like as, as much as anything. And no, if it was practical, it wouldn't even be art. That's true. It would just be an aesthetically pleasing tool. Yep. And there are some aesthetically pleasing tools out there, I should say. Just take sports cars, for example. Well, see, that sports car design, to me, would be more of an art. Um, and there's a lot of engineering, like... In one of my videos, I was like, well, this is art, not engineering, so we'll do it this, you know, we'll do it in this impractical way, like I was talking about the design of Star Trek ships. On the other hand, I had an engineer in the comments say, uh, isn't engineering a kind of art? I'm like, okay, well, you make a good point. Maybe it is. You know, I think I think engineers do put a lot of artistic liberty into what they make, you know? Take jet fighters, for instance. Like, the F-14 Tomcat doesn't have to look exactly the way it looks to do what it needs to do. But, to me, that plane is a piece of art. Or well, the engineers who make missiles. If they're pointy, it actually reduces their effectiveness. But they make them pointy anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> A rounded nose like a low caliber bullet is actually more effective when it comes to missiles. I guess um, huh, that's interesting. I guess maybe there's some vibration or more turbulence if you have a very pointy nose, something like that. The sensors are in the nose of the missile. If it's pointy, the housing for them is constrained. Oh, right, yeah. It's the same way with submarines, too. <sighs> okay. I wonder how much I can get away with and see. I want to make this ramp actually look like it does. Yeah, let's not obsess yet. Just get the basics of it done. Why? Examples of highly impractical but based art in sci fi Warhammer. <laughs> There's so many sci-fi artists that are into Warhammer, and so I've learned to gain an appreciation for it, even though I'm not that familiar with it. Take the concept of over the top and too far and push it a little bit further. That's Warhammer in a nutshell. Yes. A lot of my fans want me to start covering... Well, there's a lot of things they want me to do that, you know, I'm just not that familiar with, like Warhammer. Um, there's one guy uh, who's a big-time fan that's like, you should do something on the Macross. This, Macross, that, Macross, Macross, Macross. I like that guy a lot, but it's like, I just don't know Macross. I prefer... Uh, so you stick with stuff that I know. Do you know Star Trek? Okay. All right, let's look at references. Yeah. The position is not 100% the same as the reference image, but then I do not believe the reference image is 100% accurate anyway. So, in other words, 
it don't make a damn bit of difference. Just just get get something done here. All right, I do need to, I think this needs to be flat on the end, though. So probably just knife it across. I can grab the right thing. There we go. Why? Knife. Oh, what was the hot key to cut through? I forgot. But it should tell me on the bottom. It's a cut through. Oh, C is to cut through everything. C. There we go. Bam. I forget stuff. C. It's face it. Super Gamer Freak says my DM, I believe mean Dungeon Master, and some of his friends are Wormhammer Nuts. Indeed. Oh, by the way, I found a uh, potential Star Trek roleplay game group. IRL, like in real life. Imagine that. Of course, when I was a kid, I used to play with the uh, the FASA stuff, right? The FASA RPG stuff, of course. But now they have new rules um, that I'm not really familiar with. So I'm curious how that's going to work. Of course, FASA also had a very good, uh, very fleshed out combat system, too. All right. Let's finish this little divot. Uh, we'll do a grid fill on this here. Just fills it all in with good topo topology. Now oh, this is all kind of messy. Let's uh, I can't let this go. Can't let this part go. Thoughts on a four cube versus Good old-fashioned atomics. Shh. You know, I got to say, I don't think that um, most nuclear weapons, as they stand on Earth, are necessarily that effective in space because what makes them destructive is primarily the shock wave. Of course, there's the heat. Um... And the heat is a thing, for sure. I know they were testing old World War II battleships, uh, whether they could survive the blast from a nuclear weapon. You know, if you batten down the hatches and all that stuff. And there's a, a YouTube channel I follow called Battleship New Jersey. He was actually talking about that. And uh, sure enough, the, uh, the old battleships can keep a lot of the radiation out. So... There was a, it reminds me of a, of that battle in the uh, first Battlestar Galactica reboot where they detected nuclear weapons on one of the Cylon Raiders and it launched a nuke and yeah, it was destructive, but the, uh, the ship survived it like the armor kept most of the radiation out, but you need like a, to really get that kinetic impact, that shockwave, you need, um, you need a gas or a medium to, to go th for it to go through. I suppose that's why in Star Trek, nukes are literally the tier zero missile. Yeah, I mean, and if we're just talking about armor, you need some penetrating arm. You need something that can get through the armor and then, then they explode like into a nuke. Obviously, that would be pretty devastating. But you've got to get through the defenses first. Okay, that's good. All right. There are a lot of things that in atmosphere are incredibly destructive, but out of atmosphere don't do much. 
but the opposite is also true. One of the main yeah. problems they're having with getting railguns working is that the friction of the round leaving the barrel destroys the barrel. Right. Fat man was 20 kilotons. Mm. I'm going to catch up on chats here. Andrew Faust. Good luck surviving, practically being inside the core of a star if nuke's fireball is big enough. Lee Braddon says, I was working with this... Working with this with doing up the DS9 TM micro torpedo and worked out the 20 millimeter shell, assuming it got 7 grams of antimatter mixing with 7 grams of matter. That's a 300 kiloton explosion. Okay. Uh, let's see. That man was 20 kilotons. Super Game Freak says the firepower of a nuke isn't that powerful compared to the dangers in space. It is true, like if you have an asteroid that is traveling a certain kinetic velocity it could certainly be as powerful as a nuke if not more and it could be pretty small so numbers that i can rattle off off the top of my head if a 20 kilogram rock is traveling at one percent of light speed it hits three times harder than fat man Ooh. yeah and you don't have to spend all the uh effort trying to get it you know the the fissile material and set it up just right so that it's a proper nuke and all that good stuff so so yeah kinetic weapons are a serious thing as someone once said sir isaac newton is the deadliest sob in space <laughs> Now, you might could use a nuclear cartridge to fire your projectile to get it up to fantastic velocities, like nuclear gunpowder of a sort. Uh, Funny story about that as well. Huh? There was a nuclear test where they drilled a hole, put uh -huh. a nuclear bomb at the bottom, and put a manhole cover at the top of the hole. Oh. The manhole cover entered orbit. Oh my god. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. So, yeah. That's interesting. Alright. Before I go too far with finishing this bridge part. You know, when I was... I used to think... That this up here was the actual bridge where everybody sits... And it, because it looks like it's got a window right here. But in fact, the bridge is down in this dome area, and this is something else. Either a sensor, or... I had a thought that maybe a navigator sits up here, or some other kind of officer that does some sensor work, but it's more than likely just a sensor. Oh yeah, and if you look right here, this ramp that I was working on, it's got a ball and a thingy on it. I always think that a lot of these things on these ships, these greebles, they look like, you know how you look at a roof and you've got these air vents like for restaurants and things? <laughs> so this is probably where they're like uh, cooking burgers and stuff and they need the vent to get the like, you know, the cooking, the cooking uh, waste heat out. That's what it is. All right, so let me look at this again. All right, before I get too crazy. Here's the thing, though. When it comes to the fissile material for nuclear weapons, they would probably be better deployed as a kinetic projectile than as a nuclear weapon. Yeah, maybe. It, Especially yeah. if you just want to kill the people inside. Uh-huh. Have one section of the round surrounded by tungsten with the actual radioactive fissile material exposed to the target so that you Lewis slot and demon core the inside of your target right yeah dang it the demon core experiment was hilarious though Stick a screwdriver into the shell of a radioactive core and then wonder why everyone in the room dies. 
I'm not familiar with that. Huh. All right. The Demon Core experiments was the third bomb that was going to be dropped on Japan was deconstructed and experimented on. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to find out the exact point of criticality. The second Demon Core experiments, they had two shells of metal that would reflect the radiation back into the core to bring it closer to criticality. And normally there was a specific machine they'd use to lower and raise the core while measuring the radiation it released to find out that exact point. Hmm. But one of the researchers who had gotten comfortable with the experiment decided that the specific machine was too cumbersome. So what he'd do is he'd rest one side on a wedge and then use a flathead screwdriver to lower and raise the other side. Oh my goodness. It's basically... The screwdriver slipped and everyone in the room got irradiated. So he basically made a miniature nuclear power plant and simulated a meltdown. Sounds to me... I could just make a sphere for up here, but then that wouldn't be as... Okay, let's go extrude up just a little more. Okay, that's good enough. Now I'll catch up on chats here. Wasn't the Enterprise incapacitated by the Romulan nuclear weapon in Balance of Terror? Terror? Yes, it was. I think it was... Um, perhaps it was a combination of the nuke and the debris field. And also, I think the Enterprise might have... I don't know if its shields were up or down by that point. But yes. Um, plasma weapons, plasma. Indeed. Andrew Frost, nuclear-shaped charge. Okay. Lee Brandon, AIM-120, air-to-air missile. I think that's the one the Tomcat uses, right? 20 grams of explosive, 50-50 for matter-antimatter. That's 429 megatons. All right. Uh, okay. Talking about balance of terror when the Romulans uh, uh, dropped the nuclear mine for the Enterprise. Okay, this is looking somewhat accurate, although it's looking a little fat. I could fix that later. Oh, I need to find like a better after reference image for the back of this thing. So yeah, I think maybe the turbo lift comes up to here and then they walk into the bridge from there. And we need to extrude this out. What is everybody's favorite Klingon uh, Star Trek ship? What is mine? Well, mine's a, a non-canon ship, and that's the Romulan Winged Defender. That is my favorite ship by far. Reman Scimitar Dreadnought Warbird. Ah. It is pretty wicked looking. It isn't the most popular for some reason, and I'm not sure why, but I do like it. 
I just love the way the wings unfold with the Thaler on pulse. Yeah. <laughs> did you... Uh, uh, yeah. What, what were you saying? Well, I was just about to ask, did you own one in Star Trek Online? Yes, as well as the non-canon upgraded version, the Tall War Dreadnought Warbird. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember those. Played a lot of Hafe, Hanom, Scimitar, any kind of warbird, really. I do like my war warbirds. I do like the old Romulans of Derridix. Um, the thing is, while it's an amazing ship aesthetically, in Star Trek Online, it was just so slow. Yeah, it did not turn well at all. It was... I mean, it could whoop ass, but not maneuverable. <laughs> that is where the Mogai came in. Mm-hmm. I remember when I first started playing Star Trek Online PvP. Um, were you around when PvP and Star Trek Online was a thing? Yes. And... Obviously, things like Defiance and Birds of Prey and Mogai's that could just decloak on your six and unleash everything that was pre-buffed would win. <laughs> was that your experience as well? Yes. Yeah. Though when they added the Hafe, the Ha Nom, and the Ha Ga, Romulans dominated PvP. Mm. Science ship that can defend itself and cloak. Mm -hmm. And the half A was unbelievably maneuverable. It could 180 on a dime. Mm. I don't know if I was, if I stuck around long enough for that. I, I went back to Star Trek Online um, briefly, but yeah, I didn't. I'm not a Star Trek Online expert. You probably know more about, about it than I do, as far as just the ships and stuff. So, Andrew at Frost? Point, Go ahead. They're just making, at this point, they're just making upgraded versions of existing ships, like the Mercury, which is an upgraded Defiant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's tons of ships now. Too many. But most don't even get me started on the time ships. Yeah. The time ships not only look nothing like the regular Star Trek aesthetic, but in pretty much every aspect of the game, they are absolutely busted. Huh. Oh no, my shields are down. Good luck trying to get through my quarter million hull points. <laughs> okay. sure how exactly it's got these sort of rims this is where I might want to start mirroring yeah I'm gonna do that Okay, so I need to make... There's these sort of spines that go up. I'm going to knife it down this way. Sometimes a knife is somewhat frowned upon. Let's see. Let's see axis. Let's just go ahead and do a cut through. Ooh, I don't know if that worked out the way I needed it to. Let's see. So, just catching up. Uh, Dan Ben's favorite is Clean On Battle Cruiser. Uh, Andrew Frost's favorite is the Excelsior. Jonathan's is the uh, 
Romulan V6 Gallant Wing. I 3D printed a Gallant Wing, and you don't realize how, just how flat it is. Uh, let's see. Until you get it 3D printed. I'm getting the. Uh, this is from the. Uh, this is my own model I made. I managed to get the uh, feather pattern in there. I wish I had printed this in a different color, like gray would have been a lot better. So that you could see all that better. But all I've got is black material right now. Okay, I'm gonna extrude this out. And I'm going to have some extra faces I'm going to get rid of. Also, the weird thing about Star Trek Online, like, the weird thing about Star Trek in general, I should say, but especially Star Trek Online, is when you when you start the game out as Romulans, they give you a, a ship that's, like, probably 150 years old. <laughs> Just the design of it, like, they give you an old-style bird of prey, it's, like, 150 years old. It's, it's, the story it's, reason behind that is that it was in the possession of a civilian, so it had to be outdated for them to let a civilian have it. Yeah, let's see. Well, if I remember, you know, they were a colony, uh, obviously after Romulan was destroyed. Well, I I kind of look at it kind of like the Mech Warrior way. Like if you in Mech Warrior and BattleTech, a lot of those mechs are hundreds of years old because. You know, it, by the time you play the game, nobody's making that much in the way of new mech designs because the technology is kind of lost. But maybe in some of these outer Romulan colonies or whatever, they're like, "Yes, this is my grandfather's bird of prey." <laughs> like, uh, my grandpappy kept this in the family for 150 years. Because he was a uh, part of a house in in the Romulan or Romulan senator or something. I don't know. Maybe like in the BattleTech game by Hairbrain Schemes, where your starting mech was actually your great 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 grandfather's blackjack. Right. Oh, what the hell did I just do? I did a very illegal knife cut, in my opinion. There and sometimes I feel like I fall into Bob Ross mode when I'm modeling. You know, it's nice for all these Greebles to have friends. You know, there's just friends hanging out here. And uh, all these vertices, they just work together. Extrude it out this way. So how many people we got watching? I haven't been paying attention. Ah, just 12. That's all right. Since I don't stream much, I, I don't quite have the following yet. Uh, buying a model of the Katinga, Jonathan. Yeah, uh, I used to ha have one as a kid. But you know what? That's, I mean, that's money. <laughs> if I bought a model of every starship I was going to do, that would be kind of ridiculous. We lost somebody. People. 
like that. But, you know, what often happens with me, as, as what happened with the uh, Enterprise TM model I did, it's like I'll do it, and I'll complete it, and go back and look at it, and um, realize I did this wrong, or realize I did that wrong, and or uh, someone will comment, like in my, who's been watching, you know, somebody in the audience will say, hey, knucklehead, you got the, you got the nacelle light wrong, and you forgot this there. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> But now it's uh that model is pretty accurate. The nacelles are not quite accurate on that enterprise model, but other than that, it's pretty damned accurate. This one is probably not gonna be as accurate, but you know there will be somebody who's a Katinga expert. Or has like an accurate Katinga model in their house, and they'll be like, "You, uh, you didn't do the nacelles right, or something like that." Like, yeah, you might be right. But I do, I do love the Katinga. Hi, N. How you doing? Good dude. I'm live streaming some YouTube uh, 3D modeling. So I can't say naughty words. Uh, not too much. You can imply naughty words, but you can't just say. Yeah. Them. Yeah. I just came back from. Back from what? I can't say the word. <laughs> All right. You came back from a party. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, a one-person party. I have no idea what what it could possibly be to, that would say, I just came back from... What the hell did I do here? I went to a local Comic-Con in town on Saturday. That was surprisingly fun. I made some friends, but I wasn't prepared to cosplay, unfortunately. But there was some there was a lot of cosplay going on. Uh, I have overcomplicated my situation here. What? I have lost I have lost my flow. First off, this view is screwing me up. Clip start needs to be much lower. So I can see what the hell I'm doing. Uh, the link to what I'm streaming is, uh, I think, in the uh, VFX chat. Let's we'll see what you're making. I could stream here as well on Discord. However, it might stress my system a little bit. I can I can see on YouTube. Feel free to mute it if you get there because you'll be hearing yourself and you'll be like, do I really sound that way? No, I hear myself all the time and it makes me cry. Oh. Fifteen viewers, damn. Yeah. That's more than me. I'm rocking. It should be more given that I have sixty thousand subscribers, but this uh, this thing is a little bit short notice, and my audience is not used to me streaming, so it's all good. Yeah, it's a bit of a like on a whim thing. Yeah. You do. Well, it was like very last minute. Ooh. I'm doing a Klingon ship, the Klingon yeah. Katinga upgrade. Anyway, uh, I'm seeing you get rid of some windows right now. Uh, I'm not getting no windows. I'm just, it's not supposed to be a window. It's just that I was opening this up so I could merge these, this sort of spine right here with this part. 
Oh. And I have, uh, now I need to close it because I, I did. Yo, that's a huge ship. I did this, uh, it's not that big really. It's only about, whoops. It's only about no more than 270 meters in width, I think. So that's, that's, that's pretty big. Most we'll, people only have a few centimeters. Yeah, we're looking it's like it's about the size of a maybe the length of a Vexer or a little bit less. Yeah, I was about to say that's about cruiser size. Yeah, for, for Steve online terms. Okay, so yeah, here's the reference images over. I've got reference images over down here. I figure I'd at least get the front done and more or less accurate on the stream. I am a lot faster when I'm doing it on my own, but I can learn to yeah. get faster on streams as well. You don't have like a, a little angel and a little devil on your shoulders. Whispering sweet nothings in your ear. Yeah. I tell you, I have, uh, I think I need a focus font in my, have you ever played, um, Jade Empire? <laughs> no. Game. Oh, okay. It's, it's made by the same people that did Knights of the Old Republic, and it's just sort of a kung fu adventure. And they have these things called focus fonts. So you meditate in front of them. That way you can handle weapons better and handle tools better. And this is all jacked. This is all open right here. That's not good. Thanks. How'd that happen? I don't know. The only 3D modeling related thing I did was uh, SolidWorks, and it was a little bit different to... Is this Blender? Yeah, this is Blender. This, yeah. this right here is... This looks silly, but that's supposed to be a light beacon. From, I'll fix that later. So, just... There's also a lot of greebling going on on this ship. Lots of little dots and things. You know, yeah. just it's just mechanical stuff that nobody really knows what it is, and I don't think I'm going to duplicate that with geometry. I think I'll probably see if I can do that on a texture map, because there is a lot going on here. It makes the ship look big. Yeah. But geez, there is a lot going on there. <laughs> okay. It kind of, I like the Klingon ships, because they kind of remind me of, like, fighter planes. Yeah. They have got well, that very, like, avionic look about them. Yeah, that was the intent behind the first ones that were designed, yeah. Just check up on... They're still talking about the Tsar Bomba and nukes and chat. And hello, Dirty Jersey. Longtime fan. Old school FASA player. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Now see, this looks... This What's bottom. drinking? Cup of Joe? Yeah, just some coffee. How do you like your coffee? And stevia and um, a little bit of cream. That's all. Just coffee. I'm not a coffee snob. Just actually, I prefer half calf so I don't crash later. See, that's cool. Oh, I saw this thing that was really interesting on, like, how they decaffeinate coffee. Oh, yeah? It's the most interesting stuff. I forgot how they did it, but I know it, they, like, fill it with water, and then they drain the water. Cause the, or, like, not water. I think it's some chemical that just only takes the caffeine with it. Hang uh -huh. on. I'm looking this up, because it was really interesting. It was the, the, Swiss, the Swiss decaf method. Right. The water process. Yeah, it just soaks the beans, and then the water just takes the caffeine. Oh. And, and then they, they just drained it off. Yeah. I'm taking some artistic. Oh, you know, because what they do is they like drain it off, mm -hmm. and then they filter it through carbon to get rid of the caffeine, and then they soak the beans back in the water so they get their flavor back. Oh, no wonder, no wonder decaf doesn't taste quite as good as calf. 
because the flavor has been soaked out of it and then sort of cajoled back in. So to me, it doesn't taste as good. Yeah, I fucked up some geometry. I got to remember, I had forgotten. I, I uh, YouTube is very... Um, Man, hopefully. YouTube has gotten really strict on their language policy, so you can't cuss, you can't say the F word. Um, I think on a live stream it's okay, as long as you don't do it like within the first five minutes. Yeah. But I had forgotten I had said the F word. You're naughty. What, what a terrible role model I am as a YouTuber. What if there's like a, a young a young space nerd who's interested in 3D modeling who's watching and following you and they, they take this True. bad example and well. um however, I mean young space nerds these days uh experience things far more lewd than the F word. Yeah. You're probably right. Interact. I'm just trying to make you feel bad. No, I can't I can't say I can say frack. I just if I can learn oh, how to say yeah. frack, it would be fracking awesome. Fracking toaster. <laughs> and hello, Jonathan Riddle. Uh, kapla. You're saying something else other than kapla. My clean on's not good enough. Do you know clean on in? I I I used to, but I I went into a coma and I forgot how to speak it. <laughs> Uh, I wish we could get a translation. I guess you could run that through Google Translate. Does Google Translate have cl Klingon? Yeah. I think it does. Why not? Google Translate has Dovahkiin, for God's sake. Wait, what? I feel like I'm spending too much time on this section. However, I'm working without thinking too much, and that's always a good sign. Right. I'm I'm using a Klingon translate. Let's see. Yes, because I'm not familiar with that word. Oh, you need to pay to translate it. What the hell? What? Oh. Certainly not. Oh, no, you need to pay to translate files. Oh, whoa. What'd I do? Okay. That's not right. That needs to be a saddle. So, there's probably a faster way to do this. I, I know there's a faster way to do this. I just can't remember. There's a lot of... Everybody has inefficiencies with the way they work. Which is why I often hang out in Blender Discord so that people can look at what I'm doing and be like, Whoa! Like, bruh, you're doing that the hard way. Okay, I need to close this thing up. It's time to close this baby up. And move on to other things. This is detailed enough for now. <sighs> okay. We shall apply the mirror. We shall grab all of She'll grab this loop of edges. Oh, it's quite vulgar. It's probably like sort of like Ichuta from Star Wars. It's like, ooh, or Ichuta, like you, you, um, you're just a Shuta. You know that? Did you know that? You're just a Shuta. You're being I a. Have shot, I have shot quite a few things in my time. <laughs> You've been a real shoot that lately. Dude, I, uh... <laughs> I, I shot and ate a pigeon one time when I was, like, 12. Honestly, pigeon meat is pretty good. Oh. Squab. Don't they Make sure it? you do that in the countryside, because if you do it in the city, it's diseased. Yeah, I live in the, I live in the countryside. Huh. I've got, I got a little village. It's, it's like a little village of 150 people. Oh, that sounds charming. It is charming until you leave the house and then like everyone you see on the street as you're like within two minutes walk from your house, everyone you see, you know, mm -hmm. and then they want to talk to you. Sometimes it's nice. Sometimes I wish they would like go back to where they came from. 
their house and then sit down on the the sofa and forget I was there. Right. Okay. I've right, got to start on this. Now, question is how detailed do I want to do the rest? I need to find some more reference images, to be fair. Can you not just like pull up some some Star Wars and then look? Star Trek, yeah, Philistine. I thought that would make you more mad. Okay. <laughs> I was just betting these to flip. <laughs> I think the chat might have flipped though. Actually, this is not bad here. I thought I already had that little ball on my original, on my, maybe not. It's a little ball back there. And there's some grill plates. And that stuff is actually labeled on what it is. Let's see. Should be. Oh, yeah. Running light, I mean, let's see. Let's see. Life support, engineering, okay, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't tell me what these, all this junk is. It doesn't actually tell me what it is. Uh, it doesn't tell me what this is either. However, also... On this, there is like a little ball with things that come off of it, and I think I am going to duplicate that with geometry, so I shall get to it. This feels like it's not fat enough. I'm just going to risk pulling this out on the x-axis. You. You. I have disrupted my mesh flow quite severely. That's better. Okay. All right. So what you been up to, In? Did you have a good weekend? I slept a lot, which means it's a good weekend. Uh, I've been playing loads of DCS recently. I uh, learned the flanker, which is the Russian fight a jet or the soviet one technically wait for um, what game dcs digital combat simulator oh okay i haven't tried that one um figure it'd just be like um oh hell my brain is it's really nerdy. Like, really? Yeah, you... some of the aircraft are like full fidelity. Yeah, I think I've shown you this uh, the game before. I've been playing a lot of nerdy games. You played that hyper realistic space combat simulator game. What was it called? Oh, Children of a Dead Earth. Yeah, I remember. Children I remember of a Dead Earth. That. Yes, it was kind of rad. For those of you watching, Children of a Dead Earth is a very realistic. Space combat simulator. So you've got things like <sighs> sand guns, which fire like super fast particles of sand for point defense, and lasers, of course, and rail guns, right? And what else? What are the kind of hey? Don't in? underestimate a particle of sand in Mass Effect. That's literally what their guns are firing. Yeah. Yeah, there was like you could shoot like cannons with like proximity nukes to bop anything flying towards you. That's another good form of point defense. There were lasers. The lasers were kind of cool. The missiles were probably the best. Or the drones. The best form of point defense would simply be to throw out a cloud of shrapnel that's magnetized to stay in orbit of your ship so that incoming munitions strike the cloud first.
but that's something that we are far away from prototyping. Get the reference image again. See, they have these vents on this ship like they do on the top of restaurants. At least I always thought they were. Should be extruded along normals. Now we know that won't work. That won't work either. Yes, that works. All right. But yeah, Comic Con was cool, and I went, and uh, there was this dude. He was cosplaying as a Star Killer from The Force Unleashed. Are you familiar? No, I didn't watch anything. Uh, the game. It was from the game. Game. The Force Unleashed. Oh, the bloody okay. Yeah, he was cosplaying the uh, the evil masked version of. Um, of uh, Galen, which is, which goes by Starkiller, right? Uh huh. And um, I was like, "That's cool." You know, he's uh, Darth Vader's apprentice, but Galen eventually became good. You know, became a Jedi. Uh, but uh, Starkiller is like the evil version, and he wears a, a mask similar to Darth Vader, but not the same. And he's got like these metal claws and stuff. And uh, so he had that, and I was like, do you have the Starkiller moves? And uh, so he showed me his lightsaber moves, and they were pretty good. And it, was, it was, he was actually really athletic. And I was like, no, I'll show you this. And uh, so I showed him a YouTube video of me doing the Starkiller, pretty much very similar moves, right? He's got, you know, the signature, you know. And um, yeah. he was like, oh, yeah. that, and he was all like, oh, that was you. I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? He's like, oh, I've been, fo I followed your uh, lightsaber YouTube channel. I'm like, oh, it's like cool. And I, you're an I internet did. celebrity. Yeah, but the thing is, is like that channel, I hardly, I don't, haven't been maintaining much because for one time and for two, at the time, I didn't think I, I wasn't happy. I didn't think I looked good enough to be on camera, like I wasn't fit enough. Because I kind of wanted to make it a semi-fitness thing. And the other thing is I didn't have a, a proper camera. And um, so for all those reasons, I kind of let it go. And now to monetize that YouTube channel, I have to get, I have to go through the process of getting a thousand subscribers uh, again. Even though I already have them, I have to do it again. New subscribers. And then I also have to, uh, what else do I have to do? Damn it, why is this not working? Inset, just bloody inset, the bloody, oh. There we go. Oh, wait, that's not right. It's right. not right either. Uh, oh, let's see, individual options. So I'm considering maybe I should just bring my lightsaber content to my Resurrected Starships channel. Although, I'm 
also slightly worried that it might dilute the content. I'm having problems here. This is not doing what I had hoped it would do. I was hoping to get like a nice event action going around here, and it's not doing it. I'm trying to do it. Inset individual. Or maybe because it's not global? It needs to be a local. No. This is not acceptable. This is not an acceptable use of time. Let's go around with this thing. All right, let's try this. If any of you, if there's any blender geniuses in the channel, tell me what I'm doing wrong, because I'm trying to inset all of these individual faces, and I have it on individual right here. Individual origins. So I don't know what the hell I'm doing wrong. All right. Guess I'll go another way. Ah, let's try this. Extrude individual. There we go. That's better. Yes. Good. So I don't know. I don't know if you're much of a follower of my channel, but I'm not sure. I wanted. I've got all that. I've got all this training and time invested into lightsabers, and I'm not sure exactly how to utilize it. But I'm thinking I should put it included in my channel a little bit. Because, yeah, maybe. Oh, I found this guy on YouTube. Um, he does, like, graphics card repairs. It is the coolest thing. He, like, pulls out his, like, multimeter and he gets his probes out and he presses around the different points on the card and he figures out what's wrong with it and then he, like, melts off the, like, little control chips and stuff and then he... Replaces them and puts them back in, and then does all oh the tests goodness. on the card. It's really cool. Have you seen the guy that makes like crazy lasers and stuff? Like he'll make... yes, I know the guy. That guy is nuts. He'll like make a laser out of a microwave or something. Yeah, he'll like make the make the first video for the, like the first time in three years. People will be like, "Oh, you're not dead." Yeah, yeah, you haven't killed yourself. And then he gets like. 10 million views from the, the video. That's like a... You know, that could be... 10 million views. That could be... That could be thirty to $50,000 in ad revenue right there. Or more. I like that he doesn't make videos for the sake of making videos and grinding that ad revenue. Like, when he makes a video, it's just fantastic content. Yeah, it is. And he's like a, a, a moth enthusiast as well, which is just random and weird and whimsical. Moths are freaky. <laughs> and then you have the Venezuelan poodle moth. Oh, yeah. Gotta watch out for the Venezuelan poodle moth. They're adorable. <laughs> Yeah, I do like I do like some moths. I do like moths. Okay, now I've got that thing. 
I just had to have that thing on there. Okay. Shade smooth. I'm getting hungry. I'm gonna have to eat soon. I'll probably finish up within about 20 minutes or so. But yeah, I don't know. Rain, you're you're vaguely familiar with my channel. Do you think putting lightsaber content on there would dilute it? Di di dilute it? You have enough Star Trek, con Star Wars, and Star Trek content that it would attract the kind of people who'd be interested in that. <sighs> yeah, I think probably what like the starter because this was something I was planning on doing is, um. A video on whether lightsabers are practical on board a ship and we have access to a ship a museum here so if i can get on there <laughs> with some lightsabers i could i could get my 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 new friend i made at the comic con and be like let's go on board this aircraft carrier and let's demonstrate why full-size lightsabers are not very practical on board a ship. And um, the question is whether I should let security know uh, and risk them saying, nah, we have for insurance reasons why you can't do that, even though it's just plastic tubes that glow. I mean... If you're going to go that route, there's there's people that are, have no business touring that ship that are like 6'4 and bumping their heads and tripping over stuff, right? Um, but like an average sized person... Alright, while I'm talking about this, I'm going to go ahead and make the photon torpedo tube. But the average sized person, you know... But... As a dude in security, what what do you think? What, if I were to talk to security about that, Rain, what would be the approach? Or should I even bother? It would really depend on the officer as whether they're by the book or laissez-faire. That's true. I mean, it might be better to contact a facilitator, uh, like a tour facilitator, because then it'll be on YouTube and be like, yeah, I'm making some content about the ship. So, it'll be on YouTube. Can you please give me permission to do this thing? <sighs> I that think... would probably be the way to go about it. Right. A tour facilitator would probably be of the mind that a YouTube video within the venue would boost... Uh, how to word this? It would boost awareness of the venue. Yes. All right, so that sounds like the way to go. And, uh, yeah. All right, I'll be thinking about that. Because it's one thing to to sit and make uh, 3D models all day. And if I did that every day, 12 hours a day, I would die. Because I, my body would fail me. Um... So I have to do other things to, you know, stay in shape and stay healthy. And uh, unfortunately, sitting in front of a computer all day is not healthy. It's uh, screwed me up enough as it is. Like, you know, I've had to reverse so much spine abuse, you know. My back would go out on a regular basis and still occasionally tries to go out, but I stay on top of it now. See, Lee, Lee Breden says, there's a very good chance that the staff might actually want a part of it, and but that's me knowing a few who are involved with Texas. Yeah, Lee, I am actually in Texas, I'm uh, so I'm talking about the Lexington Museum, but the Battleship Texas, I would actually... my. I have in my mind um, a spaceship version of the Battleship Texas. So, you know what? That would probably be really popular. So they have Space Battleship Yamato, you know what I mean? So maybe I could just call it Space Battleship Texas and make some kind of... I was thinking I might make it a uh, Star Wars ship. 
but um, I could make it a general sci-fi ship. I think I will start as it is. Because it's really not a battleship. It's a dreadnought. So maybe I can... Yeah, super old. You'd have to like play into the old factor of it if you were going to make it into something. Yeah. Like in Star Wars, they have these old things called uh, Rendilli Star Drive Dreadnoughts or these old clamshell-shaped ships. So maybe I could make a variant of that and match the guns, match the main guns, and things like that. But maybe I could make it um, a little bit generic, just enough so that it could fit into some other sci-fi venues as well. Oh, huh, I'll think about it. Alright, so yeah, the hole on this the front of this very phallic ship is a little smaller than the old one. And oh dear. The ship looked like someone bull popped a penis. <laughs> oh my god. Oh boy. There's quite a few SBY ones on the Dragonfield Discord server. Really? I'm going to have to join his Discord. I think he and I would get along. I've seen him do some... Uh... Ugh, what the hell did I just do? I've seen him do some a little bit of Star Trek content just for fun. Yeah, he likes to do uh, good April Fool's ones, I think. Is it Drakenfil? Yeah, I think he does like really funny April Fools ones. Yeah, I you think know, I've seen him. Videos. Yeah. He's kind of he does a little sometimes he does a little too much purple prose for my taste like You know what I mean? He's <laughs> he gets really flowery with his language. It's like I see on, sometimes just, it is a bit over the top. This is like it's also really funny. Yeah. Sometimes. I mean, I it's it's endearing, but Sometimes I'm just like, okay, just get to the point. Stop it with all the flowery. Like, just... <laughs> yeah. Because... I think you might want to move that. Hang on. If you're still doing the thing with, like, the circle inside the circle, I think you might want to, like, pull it vertically upwards so it's not, like... Is it meant to be chiseled in like that? So, sort of... Um, well, I am... I, rather than down. I feel like I'm cheating this a little bit because the original circle I had on there was too big compared to what the new one is supposed to be. And because if we look at this, like the circle I had on there was, you know, about out to here. But I'm thinking of just teasing it a little bit because I don't, if I, if I collapse the circle I've got, it's going to screw with my geometry and mesh flow. It's going to warp everything. It's already sort of warping stuff, but yeah, if I screw with this too much, it's gonna it's gonna uh, warp all this stuff around here, and that's uh, that's annoying. But I will make this just a bit smaller, and this a bit smaller, and I feel like I honestly feel like this. This forward pod is too small to have a proper torpedo launcher. But it occurs to me that... Um... Oh. It occurs to me that maybe, maybe there's multiple torpedo launchers in here. Like, maybe... I know for, for most games in canon, it's not that way. But it could be that there's like a a pack of six torpedo launchers around just in like a cluster there. And then it's able to fire a spread if it wants to, like a spread that comes out and then just you know, spreads out. So it could be that. Because it makes no sense for one torpedo. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. It's just art. Just go with it. Yeah, I mean, the way, like, 99 out of 100 sci-fi ships are designed, it's, like, very much just for cool looks rather than any practicality. Like, yeah. 
the there's nothing of practical about soul. the shape of this warship. Right. Okay. So I've made some progress doing that, doing that. Back here, there's a ball that goes on top of a bunch of junk back here. Do I want to model that out or no? I'm going to make that part of the bump normals in my texture shader. So, however, there is this ball here, which I think is a big ass uh, running light. Do you know of any other like Katinga 3D models? I guess the only other real one would be in Star Trek Online, right? True. Yeah, I'm sure there's some like up on Sketchfab and stuff like that. The reality is, um, a lot of them are not as accurate. Like the ones that you could just buy off of, say, Sketchfab or CG Trader. A lot of them are are not really all that accurate. Maybe even less accurate than this. Yeah. But you know, like make decent money just selling 3D models of loads of random shit you make. A lot of people do. I mean, like I how... my how stuff is is up stuff? on CG Trader for relatively high prices. Um, maybe I'll start to lower it all because my sales on CG Trader haven't been that great lately. But I haven't really put a lot of my stuff. I mean, probably. I could have three three times the amount of stuff up on CG Trader that I do. So maybe what I could do is just put a lot more stuff up there and uh, go the volume route. I mean, there's no reason not to, right? Yeah. All right. I think also what I will do is... Put the grooves in here that are supposed to be there. I should use accurate referencing if I'm going to do that. Oh, okay. Take this reference image. No. Actually, from the front, it looks like I've, my proportions are pretty good. Let's see. From the top, they're not that accurate. Well, they're accurate, but slightly imperfect. No, Metamoose, I've not made a Miranda, but I will. That'll probably be the next thing I'll tackle after I get this done, because you know a Star Trek The Wrath of Khan battle breakdown is coming. It is coming. I guess my only disadvantage there is I, I have a vision in my mind that's epic, and I might try to make it too perfect. We mustn't let perfection be the enemy of the good. Okay... I believe I can just make a new loop cut there. Or I could knife it. I think I'll knife it. Knife. Yeah, this is... Thanks. I'm going to put these grooves in, and then I'm probably going to stop for the day. Okay. Make 
actually, I don't need that one. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay. Looks like they go. Actually, do go all the way over here. Quiet because I'm trying to get this accurate. Oops. Okay. Let's do an extrude along normals back in this way. Okay, cool, that's good. Oops. Let's do it again. That's pretty good. All right. Then I'll have to make the groove on that part too. But I'm going to do that later. I think I'm just about done here. I have been streaming for two hours. So... I'm probably going to call it here. Um, I will end by those of you who are watching off the live stream. Be sure to subscribe and hit notification bell. And feel free to support me on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash resurrected. <clears throat> anyway, I'll put that in the video description. All right. Comrades, any comments? Y'all want to say goodbye? See you later, dudes, dudettes, and other forms of dude obligated. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. Let me end this thing. Ending it here. See ya.